Well, hello. How are you today? Uh, hello, I, I am fine. <laughs> good, good, good. Welcome to class. Okay. Welcome to class. So um, this week we're going to talk about the cross-cultural leadership in healthcare. You know, as we know that cross-cultural leadership in healthcare is, is crucial for in, you know, effectively managing diverse teams and serving um, diverse patient populations. It involves with understanding and uh, respecting cultural differences and adapting to leadership styles to accommodate various cultures and normal it norms and values, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. As we know, and we, you know, dive in a little bit more, uh, effective cross-cultural leaders, leaders in healthcare are prioritized in communication, empathy, and um, cultural um, improving patient outcomes and team collaborations. And so I read this story um, I really want to share with you this afternoon. It's about, um, it, it was a doctor, and it was a doctor that she actually stepped into a new role as a head cardiologist in the department of a, at City General, at the City General Hospital. And so what happened was um, she, her name was Dr. T uh, Patel. Dr. Patel, she stepped into a new role uh, as a head of the cardiology department at City General Hospital, and she was she was excited, but you know she quickly realized the challenges of heading a team compromised of doctors, nurses, you know support staffs, and from the diverse cultural you know backgrounds. So one day during a team meeting, Dr. Patel uh, noticed that some members. Uh, seemed kind of a little hesitant to speak up while others dominated the conversation. And, you know, she was like sensing the need for, you know, to implement a rotate rotating le leadership approach. And, you know, I, I really do like that because, you know, with a rotating leadership approach, it's like we're different teams, members took turns leading discussions and decision decision making. So I, I really felt like that's a good idea. And so, you know, with your career, Al, have you ever had like, you know, team meetings where uh, you have, uh, I want to say, uh, watch your, your uh, leaders have wrote, used like a rotating leadership approach when where there's different teams, you know, taking turns with like discussions and decision making process. Wait, yes, yes, I have. Because I used to work in like a, a, a like an orthopedic session that's pretty much because like, mm -hmm. I was I was in the hospital mm -hmm. with the orthopedic and you know you have the intake personnel, you have the medical doctors and also you have the techs that um right. you have to work with all with them. But so yeah. And then also that with that, you have to intermingle with um, each other because sometimes the um, techs took on as the uh, intake personnel, and uh -huh. then the doctors also took on as the it as, uh, as the uh, as the uh, techs because they do it there also have with their job. So yeah, oh, wow. it, it does inter intertwine with each other with that. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, you know, also um, I read where it, that she uh, organized like a cultural uh, workshop to help her team to understand and appreciate each other's background better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Because, you know, I have been on teams like that, you know, where we have to constantly, you know, uh, attend workshops um, to understand, you know, uh, you know, there are, you know, different backgrounds. And mm -hmm. so, you know, you know, I want to say through these workshops, you know, I have learned even myself how to better communicate with more with mm -hmm. cultural differences and, you know, building a stronger relationship. And so um, I know that you shared with me 
that you served in the military and thank you for your service. And um, you want to share a little bit about, you know, uh, your background and things like that, you know, for us to understand how did you learn how to build um, a, a stronger relationship? Well, with that, with that said, I'm, I'm, um, I said, like, like I was telling you, I've been in the military about 20 years. And then uh, I, I've had numerous, numerous MOSs, which is uh, a type of job in the in the military. But mm -hmm. um, the most I had was like a six, which is I came in as a 91 Bravo, or now it's called a six day whiskey. But what it is 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 uh, which is a medical specialist. It's pretty much like a CNA of um, of RNs. Okay. But um, what we what we usually do, which like I said, when we was in the field, <laughs> what we did was pretty much everything. We was like an ER doctor. Mm -hmm. We we are ER doctor pretty much because we was we would um help make sure that the because actually it's not say the ER doctor. It's more a first responder because what we have to do we had to make sure that the patient was stable enough so we can move them to get them where they can get treatment that they needed. Oh wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Wow. But um, but that that's that's when that's that's like the in the field. But as a but because I worked in the hospital too. But as in the hospital, we worked as as a CNA. So we have to have the nurses give not not give medicine, but we have to have the nurses move patients, um, uh, help them uh, do their beds and all pretty much of that. Right. So. And, okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. So, you know, as a result, you know, um, the atmosphere, uh, I'm quite sure, you know, uh, collaborating with all medical staff, you, you, and especially I, I've been in healthcare for 25 years, mm -hmm. uh, the atmosphere in, in the, you know, in the department will become more collaborative and supportive, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so it it does, and also, Al, it also the patients will notice the positive change too, because they'll feel more mm -hmm. comfortable, you mm -hmm. know, uh, feel more comfortable with you, and they feel more understood and cared for by a team that value diversity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know, yeah. Go ahead. Because, because with that said, um, bringing up about the patient, I had a patient that I was I was working with when I was in in the orthopedic session. I was yeah. working with a patient, and it was about ten years later. I met her again, and I uh -huh. met her with my wife, and she said, "Oh, your husband took great care of me more than anybody else in the hospital. They, your husband took great care of me." Great. Yeah, yes, yes, and I don't even remember. <laughs> right, That's the thing. you know. It, the quote by Maya Angelou, you know, um, a person may not, may forget what you have done, but they yeah. will never forget how you made them feel. Yeah. 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 So, you know, with uh, reading the story about Dr. Patel and her commitment to cross-cultural lead leadership, it transferred her into a model of excellence where cultural differences were appreciated mm -hmm. and the right and also to provide better care uh for all and so yeah 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 i read this story and i said you know what hey i'm going to share it uh you know with today's uh, uh lecture well and uh you know get your 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 intake on it yeah and so um can you tell me um, also about the countries that you have um, served in in the military. Okay, yeah, because I, I like I said I served in um, Egypt. I, I served in Egypt, Kuwait, and I, Afghanistan, and also Korea. Oh but, wow! Um, yeah, mm -hmm. but the but the uh, but the most most of, I think most of it or comes relate with this um, lecture is being with yeah. Egypt. Egypt. Egypt, I'm there. With there, I'm ready for you to share that story. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Tell with, us about Egypt, it. it is a multi multinational um, observance, which is the MFO that we use. Yeah, and what we, we was watching over watching over the border for Egypt, 
but we had Fiji, Australians, and also Colombians. We was all working okay. together. So, okay. With that said, yeah. I was in, I was in the, I was medical then, and with that with that said, we was all working together. Okay. And so yeah, U.S., Colombia, Fiji, Australia, we was in all all working together with uh, helping each other's patients. So we wow. were doing that. Yeah. Wow. With with the Colombians, it was a barrier language because they were speaking Spanish. Yeah. We had we had a few that could speak Spanish, so that's what that's what uh that downfall for that. But that's okay. what we had to do. Okay. And also, uh, you know, my background is tech. Mm -hmm. And so, I, you know, I'm just curious, what role does like uh, healthcare technology play in improving medical care for military personnel? Well, with that said, like I said, they, well, the, the main thing is when we had, we had x-ray, we had physical therapy, all of that. But the main thing mm -hmm. was lab. Lab okay. was they had we had to do pretty much everything by hand in the lab because we mm -hmm. didn't have any of the the um, centralizing uh, infusions. Most of the most of the stuff we had to turn by hand to do it. Yes, yeah. So, you know, how, and you know how that is. <laughs> we had to do it real fast for to make um, get your blood samples. So, mm -hmm. so but, you know, I'm very curious about this too. Um, how does I mean uh, telemedicine? Does it benefit like in military healthcare, especially like in uh, you in a remote area? Mm -hmm. So did you did you guys actually use more like a telemedicine benefit? Uh, you know, in the remote areas. Yes, we did. It, it okay. came later. We came later. Yes, we did. But we have a system called an Alta. Yes. And what that does, and this is is now bringing up the computerized era. So what we did was we could put everything in the computer, and then um, the other doctors could see what we did, what we have done. Oh, wow. So, oh, yeah. wow. Wow. But this is awesome. Yeah. And, you know, here's my last question. That, um, you know, I'm very curious about. You know, are there any uh, challenges or limitations um, in adopting a new healthcare? Technology within the military. Um, I don't think it is any challenges, but it, it can be because, like I said, it, yeah, we have we have people that um we have people that's not skilled in the new technology, so we have to make sure that we get people trained up soon where they can use this new technology. Because, okay. like I've said about the lab, we was using old centrifuges where we yes. were doing everything by hand, but now if we can plug it into plug a machine in the wall. And do the centrifuge with that. Oh wow! So, okay. Yeah. okay, okay. Oh wow! Well, I I, I want to thank you for attending um, this uh, lecture, and um, we're going to continue to dive in on this week's um, uh, lecture: cross cultural le leadership in healthcare. Yes. And so, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yep. Yeah, thank you. That was, that's, that was interesting. I, I didn't know as much as I knew. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't know. I mean, hey, we, we're we both learning. We yeah. are both learning. I mean, I, I didn't know, you know, especially you like in remote areas in the military. Yeah. I was always curious about that. And so, mm -hmm. you know, with your expertise, and your service, you know, of 20 years. And which branch? Army, right? Army, yes. Yes. I mean, you have really shed a light on, um, you know, the uses of technology. Also, mm -hmm. uh, the leadership in, you know, in, um, in healthcare. So, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, because, wow. Yes. Yeah. And so thank you so much. And I will see you uh, week five. Okay.